Hello and welcome to another Adult Coloring Tuesday tutorial. I'm your host and your artist, Lisa Mitrokin, and today I will show you something truly magical. Something that you guys have been requesting for a while. Amazing glow effects on white paper. If you're already familiar with my channel and my art, you probably recognize my white charcoal on toned paper technique. It's kind of my signature move. I use it all the time in skin tones and flowers and shiny surfaces, and especially in glow effects. But while the coloring community quickly adopted the white charcoal on gray paper look, many of you are still coloring on white paper. And the reason for that is published books. Most, if not all, published coloring books and magazines are printed on white paper. And while PDF downloads are becoming more and more popular, and many of you are printing on toned paper, just as many are still coloring in classic bound books. So today, I'm doing just that. I'm working in a volume of Coloring Heaven magazine that I was featured in. This is issue 41, the Halloween special. And I actually have one page already colored in it. This was one of my very first videos that I ever published on YouTube. It's a page by one of my favorite artists, Anise Guerrero. And I did this one in Prisma color pencils. I didn't even do tutorials back then. I just colored it for fun and filmed it. I have a feeling I'll be doing a lot more pages by this artist. Today though, I'm working on one of my own. One of my classic Halloween images, Cathedral Cats. Because it's kind of perfect for demonstrating glow effects with that big stained glass window in the background. And it has interesting subjects that we can use to our advantage for backlight effects. All right, where do we start? When working on toned paper, I teach you guys to start with white to establish the glow. But here, we already have the white of the paper. So what we need to do is build up all the colors and shadows, making the white so stark by contrast that it looks like it glows. Here, I'm actually starting with my deepest reds, and I will build up a nice gradient from red to orange to yellow to white to the center of the window. I'm doing this mostly in Prismacolor, but any brand of pencils is fine, as long as you follow the same steps and try to match the colors to the best of your ability. Pick the pencils that you have that are the most vibrant. Black Widows are good, um, Fiber Castells will work here. Oh, and of course, this is perfect for oil pastels, but we're not doing that today, I'm getting carried away. On this one, I'm working systematically. I'm coloring one glass panel at a time and one color at a time. You can certainly play with more or less detail. Me, I want just enough detail on each segment of glass for it to look slightly different from the one next to it, but I also want my color gradient from the edge to the center to be smooth and uniform. Once I'm done with my red band, I add my next color, orange all around, making sure that I add more or less the same amount of it all over. I want some imperfection here and there because it's glass, but not a lot. I'm also allowing my orange to spill onto the red. That makes the red just a touch more vibrant. I follow the same steps with the yellow, adding a band of it all around the circle, trailing it into the white areas gently, and also letting it spill into the already established orange. Again, one glass panel at a time, but keeping the whole composition in mind. At this point in the orange and yellow layers, I'm also starting to establish these lines leading out of the center. These could be artifacts in the glass itself, or they could also be suggestions of light glow. We'll see how it works out. I'm also adding a little bit of light spill onto the cats, just because I'm already working with yellow, but you can leave this step for a little bit later. This is looking good, but I want the red areas to be even more rich, so I enhance them with deep purple. I'm adding this purple lightly to some of the darker panels, going over the outlines and also introducing more of these leading lines. I like the idea of them being artifacts, but also the path that the light will travel. And enhancing red with purple is actually one of my favorite color tricks. So far so good, but it's far from glowing. The thing that really sells the glow illusion is contrast. A candle glowing in a dark room is mesmerizing and shiny and, and clearly stands out, while a candle in a brightly lit room is easily overlooked. 
it's still glowing, but it's outshined by all the ambience. So in order to make our stained glass window really glow with the light that's passing through it, we need to make the rest of this side of the space really dark. Exactly like you would expect it to look inside of a dark cathedral. For this part, I'm switching to something that will go by a lot faster. And we'll also put this paper to a test. Watercolor. I have no idea what kind of paper this is printed on, but it looks and feels very durable. It even has a little bit of tooth to it. The responsible thing to do is, of course, to grab one of the first pages that doesn't have any art on it and test the paint there. But I just have a really good feeling about this paper. I think it will hold up really well. We'll see. And I was right. So far, so good. I'm being a little conservative on the amount of water that I'm using, and I'm also using it over the established layer of colored pencils, but so far there's no warping, no weird texture changes. This may work out beautifully. If you're working in a different book, printed on different paper, you may want to be careful with watercolor. You may even consider using acrylic paint instead, or continue with pencils. The kind of watercolor that I'm using here is a bit chalky, and I'm actually able to add lighter colors on top of darker ones, like I would with pastels. So I'm starting with pure white, and I'm adding it heavily to the center area, spilling onto the cats to take away some of the black outlines, and also using broad and quick strokes to add more of those shiny rays coming out of the center. Working with this kind of watercolor paint is interesting because there's a lag. You don't see the final effect of the paint until it actually dries, and it's especially freaky with light colors. When using white and yellow, it actually looks like I'm only adding water to the page. So I'm constantly adjusting for a 10 second delay. It's kind of weird. Adding watercolor over pencil on this paper seems to be working out nicely. I don't need to add a lot of pigment and the paper is not warping so far. I think I'll just enhance the yellow and the red tones and we can move on. Like I mentioned earlier, for this illusion to work, we need to completely cover the background. I'm not yet sure how much of this red glow I want around the window in the end, so I'll start adding it pretty generously, and I'll probably cover most of it as I go on. In case of stained glass windows, remember to keep the white and yellow glow to the center, not around the walls. Here we want the area to be really dark, with very little definition. I'm using only red, dark brown, and black. And now I'm really testing this paper. I'm comfortable enough to use my regular amount of water, I'm adding very heavy layer of pigment, and I'm painting directly onto the page, not over a layer of colored pencils like I did on the stained glass. And still the page doesn't look damaged at all. There's some warping, you can see that the page is a little bit wavy at this point, but it's to be expected. It's nothing that a pile of heavy books can't fix in an hour. Once everything's dry, of course. But honestly, I'm impressed. For this heavy watercolor work, the paper is holding up beautifully. And now for the most fun part, for me at least, the backlit characters. Now, this can be a little tricky, but not in the way that you may think. The trick is actually to force yourself to keep it simple. I know that the cats are very interesting subjects and they have all that intricate designs that you really want to play with and fill them in with different colors, but for the sake of creating a truly dramatic backlight effect, we must completely disregard color and detail and focus only on light and shadow. It doesn't matter what color the cats really are. Because of this very intense light that's right behind their heads, we will only see the light spill and the shadows, the dark side of the cats. So I'm using only brown with a touch of gray and I'm keeping the centers of the bodies noticeably darker. This is another tricky part. Many colorists, when faced with three-dimensional shapes, immediately start adding shadows to the edges, leaving the centers lighter. That works for traditional head-on lighting, but for these characters that are backlit, everything has to be flipped. The heads are affected by the bright light far more than the bodies and the paws, so here I'm adding more light spill and less shadow. Their little faces are now reduced to just tiny dark muzzles and ridiculously thin necks. But bear with me, this is going to look great in the end. To get that diffused look on the cats, I'm first applying some water to the paper, 
then adding a layer of gray and brown, then adding another layer of gray and brown, and then another layer, as many as it takes, maybe even with a touch of black, if I really need to make the center darker. But each new layer is a little bit smaller, a little bit less surface area, so that the centers are the darkest. The water here is pretty much doing all the blending, but I'm also helping the gradients alone with my brushwork. Don't over perfect this part and don't go chasing detailed fur effects. They don't matter here. In fact, less definition is better. Think of any character you've ever seen standing in front of a really bright light source. You don't see detail. You just see a suggestion of a shape. Adding detail here may reduce the overall effect that you're going for. And this isn't to say that all versions of this page might be made with dramatic lighting like this. Stained glass isn't always glowing with strong heavenly light. Sometimes it's very gentle and subtle. And in that case, bring out all the detail you can handle. As a matter of fact, one of my all-time favorite colorings of my art is a coloring of this very page. This is done by my friend and an absolutely phenomenal artist, Natalie Tame. She chose to go with soft pastel colors, lots of detail, and she still pulled off a very nice glow effect. In fact, her coloring is the cover of one of my published books. So you see, I do like the soft diffuse look. It's just that it's not what I'm teaching in this lesson. This is all about the dramatic mood. And to add just an extra touch of drama, I'm keeping their eyes pure white, like they too are glowing. These are Halloween cats after all. A touch of something spooky fits the characters. Actually, Cathedral Cats are becoming a Halloween tradition of mine. I released a new version of Cathedral Cats the following year, and this year they will be new Cathedral Cats again. I've added more yellow to the cats with my watercolor paint, and now I'm working with pencils again. Be sure to let the page dry completely before working with pencils over watercolor. It doesn't take long. I just went to get a cup of tea, and by the time I came back, it was all set. This part of the coloring will be specific to your coloring style and how much detail you prefer. Me, I'm really liking the diffused look of the backlit cats. I don't want to destroy it by overworking the detail, but I also want the designs on their fur to be a little bit readable. I'm not adding a lot of color or any color really, but I am taking time to clean up some of the gradients and lines. A touch of white charcoal again to hide any remaining black outlines here around the ears and it's almost done. What else can we do here? Let's add some gold to the frame just for decoration and something is still missing. I forgot the shadows. This light will cast some shadows on the floor. So I'm adding my shadows with a black pencil, but using watercolor would be even faster if you want to just do it that way. Go for it. When adding shadows, remember to keep perspective in mind. Our leading lines will be right about here. And also remember that shadows don't have clean and sharp outlines. The further out from the subject they get, the fuzzier they appear. I think this looks great. I'm gonna call it done. I hope you had a great time coloring along with me. If you don't already own this issue of Coloring Heaven magazine, I highly recommend it. I'll put a link to it in the video description. I know that they're planning something special for October as well, but my lips are sealed. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel if you don't already. Also, check out Coloring Heaven's new and shiny website. It's quite cool. Link in the description, of course. And I'll see you next week for an hour of live coloring where we'll practice the same glow effect on white paper together on a smaller stained glass window. Thank you so much for watching, for learning. I'll see you guys in a week. Bye.